This is a video all about how to get and keep a scholarship in play to earn gaming. This will apply to Alluvium as well as other crypto games. Managers might learn a thing or two as well. My name is Najaf and I'm a professional ranger. Like all of you, I crash landed here in Alluvium with nothing. Join me on my journey as I capture and train Alluvials as I battle my way to the top. You're watching Najaf Plays Journey Through Alluvium. We'll go over how to promote yourself, negotiate payment, retain that scholarship once you get it, as well as a list of do's and don'ts. Quickly, let's just start off with some differences between Alluvium and some other crypto games. So on the right, you'll see some screenshots from Warina and Fancy Birds and Axies. I know there's a lot more out there. These are just ones that I'm involved in, so I understand them a little better. But some of the key differences are in Alluvium, there's going to be multiple ways to earn. There's going to be catching Alluvials. There's going to be the Survivor Mode. There's going to be Rank arena is going to be the, Le the leviathan arena other crypto games are more straightforward like you have objectives each day that you need to meet or you earn a certain amount when you win a battle alluvium is going to be more of a long-term play you're not going to be able to just hop in the game as a scholar and just start earning a good amount right away there's going to be a lot of reinvesting in time involved before you really build up an account to a point where you are earning a good amount alluvium is going to require a computer the asterisk is just because they did say they'll release a mobile version at some point but that won't be out to start you can think of alluvium as more of play and earn and these other games are more play to earn because like i said with all the different ways of earning in alluvium it's more like you're playing the game you're enjoying the game and you're building up value in an account instead of just playing and earning an in-game crypto there's going to be skill involved in alluvium if you want to get some good returns in it where some of these other games require very little skill so promoting yourself now you're not going to have your standard resume that you'd be sending off to a job or to a college but you do need something that a manager can look at and decide if you're going to be a good scholar for them my recommendations would be to keep it short include gaming experience play to earn experience the time commitment that you're willing to put in sometimes you can include your location and your payment expectations but that's going to be really where you are in the world and this could be good or bad for wherever you are but realistically Realistically, if you're in a part of the world that you can get by with less money, then you end up being a better scholar option. In the United States here, minimum wage in most areas of the country is up to at $15 an hour. As a scholar, you're not going to be able to get $15 an hour out of this game. Something here that you shouldn't include is stating why you need the money. You don't want to be looking for sympathy. That's not what a manager wants to see. I've had a lot of potential scholars say how they have family members sick in the hospital or their car broke down or or they need money for something specific and that's fine and I don't doubt that those things are true but just know that that's not something that you want to include on your resume. Now here's just an example of a really good resume posted in my discord that I'll get to in a second. I'm not going to read through this too much take a screenshot if you like but just some things to note is that this potential scholar makes it very clear what he's talking about. You got capital letters here. It's spaced out. It's easy to read. You can see that this scholar is motivated and would really appreciate this opportunity and just explains why they're looking for this and why they would be a great addition to the team. Now, what is a manager looking for? It really is quite simple. A manager is looking for someone with, with high energy, a good attitude, gaming experience, and really when it comes down to it, profit potential. If it was easy for a manager to tell which scholar is going to make them the most money, more often than not that's the scholar they're going to choose so if you can get that point across that you are going to make that manager the most profit you have a good chance of getting that position now this is for the pre-offer once you're under management or once you are a scholar already the manager just wants you to be respectful have good communication and that doesn't mean communicate all the time or too often it just means communicate when it's needed a scholar that doesn't complain, and again, a scholar that they know is doing their best to be the most profitable in that game. If you're finding this video helpful, please click the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So where to find a scholarship or where to promote yourself? There's a few different options here. You have social media. You'll see managers on Twitter, Instagram, Discord. There are guilds for Alluvium and for other play and earn games, and you could hop into those discords for those guilds. A lot of guilds are going to be supporting scholarships, and 
then that's great. But personally, as a scholar, I don't want to just be one of many scholars for a guild that might not get much attention. I'd be looking for more of that small business owner or that, that manager that is going to work more closely with you. You know, a manager that might only have a handful of scholars that's going to give you more attention and care more about your success. And that's what led me to make my own Discord here, calling it GameFi Contact. You can see we're still fairly small. We have just under 80 members. We do have managers for a handful of different games that are already in this Discord, as well as other people who plan to be managers for Alluvium and other games in the future. You can see we have about 17 current and future managers out of 76 total. That means if you're a potential scholar, getting into this group now and communicating and talking to these managers is going to give you a great opportunity in the future. I'll have a link for this in the description below. Sometimes that link expires and it doesn't work. So feel free to just comment or send me a message somewhere and I'll I'll get you that link if you're interested. Now here's some things you want to look at when you're talking with a potential manager. You have to think of this as a partnership, especially when it comes to Alluvium, because there's going to be a lot of communication that's needed. You really don't want to just go with any manager, just like any job out there. It's not just that you get an offer. It's does that spot work well for you? Now, the first one here, I have an asterisk and it says no experience as a manager. That's not to say if somebody became a manager for the first time that they're going to be bad. You know, everybody has to start somewhere. But just keep in mind, if they haven't been a manager before, they really haven't gone through that experience that might be necessary to, to run a scholarship program. I've seen a lot of managers get into it that they don't know what they're doing and they end up just breaking up the scholarship, selling off the assets if they get scared or they make promises that they can't keep because again, they just haven't been in that situation or don't have that experience. But again, giving these new managers an opportunity can be really good in the long run for you. So don't count them out. Another red flag is if you're talking to this potential manager and they don't ask you questions because any manager who wants to start up a partnership and start up a scholarship, they want to know they're getting the best potential scholar. So they're going to ask a lot of questions. So if you get someone that's not asking any questions, you should really be questioning why. If a manager is offering you a much higher percentage than what would be normal in that game, you know, you might see that and, and get all excited. Oh, this manager wants to pay me 75% of the profits. This guild is promising me a certain amount of money per week or per month. That's generally a red flag to look for. One of the things with a scholarship program is a lot of times it's more more the scholar that needs to trust the manager than the other way around. I've heard plenty of stories of a scholar being promised a high amount. They play for a few weeks or a month, earn a certain amount of the rewards, and then the manager just takes all the rewards and cuts off the scholarship and never talks to them again. So you don't just want to jump into anything. And another red flag is a manager not willing to negotiate. If you think you're worth more than that manager is offering you, then tell them why that is and and a good manager will listen to you and negotiate. A bad manager won't do that. So negotiating the pay structure. There's a lot of things you need to take into consideration here. You want to leverage your experience. So if you do have experience in similar games or play and earn games, you want to let that be known. And somebody who has that experience should probably expect slightly higher pay than somebody who's starting it for the first time. You also want to have a good understanding of the crypto markets. So at the time of this recording, the markets are starting to turn a little green. But overall, the crypto market is down, which means a lot of these play and earn games and coins have more upside than downside. So if you're looking at a 30 or 40% split of the earnings and that only comes out to a dollar or $2 a day, know that that 30 and 40% split could end up being five, six, seven, ten dollars $10 a day in the future once Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market goes up. And that's also something to consider if you're looking for a scholarship when the market is really hot and really high up there. You don't want to accept something where you're only making a small amount at the height of the crypto market knowing that there's more downside from that point. Take into consideration the skill required to play that game. Another game that I'm involved in is Fancy Birds. It can be a fun game. It can be an addictive game. But for the most part, there's very little skill required to earn the daily rewards. So if there's less skill, you should expect less pay. The time required to earn. Again, going back to Fancy Birds, you can max out the earning potential for one bird in 30 minutes. When it comes to Alluvium, to max out your earning potential for the day, 
depending on how you're set up with your manager, could take hours. Um, also, your crypto gaming experience is going to be important. Gaming of similar styles. Pokemon is similar. Team fight tactics is a similar one. And another thing that's important to keep if you have them are just screenshots of, of high scores, of rewards, or even if you've had a manager in the past, a screenshot of them saying that you're doing a great job. Anything that's going to make you look better. All right, so I have a chart here. I don't have this converted to Excel yet. I do plan on doing that and posting it in my Discord, but let me just show you how it's going to work here. This video is taking too long, so I had to cut it short. Make sure to come back for the second part of this video where I'll show you how to use this graph and retain your scholarship. See ya. Make sure you click that subscribe button and check out this video I've highlighted here if you haven't seen it already. I highly recommend it. I'm also on Instagram posting more content about Alluvium, Fancy Birds, Axie Infinity, and more. So go give that a follow. You can find all these links below. Thanks again.